Hello ladies and gentlemen, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and there is no question that Adobe is an absolute powerhouse in the graphics industry. From a Photoshop to Illustrator to Premiere and InDesign, you name it, if there is a graphical niche, chances are Adobe is one of the biggest players in it. But there's a variety of reasons why you may not want to use Adobe products. You may hate the Creative Cloud subscription, you may just not like Adobe. Well, what today I'm going to do is look at some of their most popular suites and give you uh, both a open source or free alternative as well as a commercial alternative. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you a guide from Kenny where it's even more in-depth alternatives that are out there. So let's just jump right in. We're going to start things off with Adobe Illustrator. Adobe Illustrator is a graphic suite for doing vector graphics. Uh, and yeah, the first alternative I would say to it is Affinity Designer. Now I actually prefer Affinity Designer, Affinity Designer outright over Adobe Illustrator. I actually use this guy for quite literally everything, uh, including as you can see as I drag this in from off screen, the uh, logo for this particular video was done in Affinity Designer. I use Affinity Designer for just about everything, and I just love Serif's products. They're uh, cheap. Uh, they're $50 to $60 USD, sometimes on sale from that, and you buy it once, and you get updates for years and years and years and years. They just released version 2. You got 2.1 as a free upgrade. Affinity is just probably the best commercial alternative out there to Adobe products, and when it comes to uh, vector graphics, I just straight out prefer Designer over Adobe Illustrator. So that's definitely one you can start commercially. Now, if you want to stay in the more free open source alternative, there is Inkscape. Now, there's a major release coming for Inkscape with uh, a lot of updates. Inkscape 1.3 should be coming very soon. Uh, hopefully, we get to see some uh, pretty big and performance improvements in there. Because if I have a gripe with Inkscape, especially compared to uh, the uh, designer suite, it's the speed and the interface, personally. But if you're looking for a free and open source alternative, Inkscape is a perfectly viable option. Now we're going to get into Animator. Now this is, um, I think this is ultimately what Flash sort of turned into. It's for doing cartoons, web banners, games, and so on. Uh, and the alternatives to Animate are, there's actually quite a few of them. Now the one I'm going to pick out as a commercial option is something called Moho. Now this used to be Anime Studio. Uh, it's been around for ages and ages. The newest version is Moho 13. I'm pointing out specifically because there's actually a Moho 12.5 bundle going on over at Humble. So if you're looking for a commercial alternative, uh, at least for the next few days, you can get Moho uh, quite cheap. So like 30 bucks USD. Uh, and then you can upgrade that to the newest version if you wish. But this is uh, definitely one of the options out there. Unfortunately, or I suppose fortunately, though, it's not the only option. You've also got open tunes. There's a ton more of um, animation tools out there. We'll get to that in a minute when we get to uh, Kenny's summary of all the alternatives. But those were the two that I would definitely focus on. Open Tunes was actually used for like Studio Ghibli. Uh, so it has got some definite pedigree behind it. I did a video on it in the past. Now next up we're going to do two at once. Adobe Premiere and Adobe After Effects. They're both for sort of the same thing. One is a, a straight out non-linear video editor. The other one is more for doing effects, motion effects and so on. But you kind of would often use the two together. And they kind of blend together in alternatives to them. So let's go jump in and take a look at the alternative. Now the only one I like, especially for visual effects, uh, is HitFilm. Uh, I got HitFilm Pro from a Humble Bundle for like $25 or $30 in the past and I really am a big fan of it. Now I know a lot of people actually prefer DaVinci Resolve and this is uh, all you need to do any kind of video editing. It is a massive program. It is a node-based um, graph node approach to things, a bit of a learning curve involved with it, but it is also completely free. The company behind it makes hardware, so they want you to buy their hardware and black magic, uh, but they give you a very powerful nonlinear video editor uh, suite that's, again, used commercially for major motion pictures even, uh, and this is probably the most commonly used video editor out there, and it is completely Free. Uh, another option you've got there in the nonlinear editing space, especially when it comes to special effects, and this also could compete with Animate that we talked about earlier on, is Blender. Now, Blender has a full suite video editor built in. A lot of people don't actually realize that. Also, via Grease Pencil, which has gotten a ton of love, the uh, 2D animation tools have gotten better and better and better. And of course, on top of that, you've got all of the 3D stuff. You've got the compositing stuff that's built in there. Blender is a graphics powerhouse that can compete in a number of categories. Uh, I personally don't love it for video editing. I've never had great experiences there, but some other people absolutely swear by it. And when it comes to special effects, it's hard to beat Blender in that regard. And then another option, and I literally have zero experience with this, so stay tuned. I will do it in an upcoming video of some form. There is a program out there called Natron, which is an open source, open source um, compositing and VFX motion graphics software suite. So if you need to do uh, special graphics effects, uh, Natron is an option for you. Again, I don't have any actual experience with Natron. Hopefully, I will address that at some point. 
point in the future. Uh, and then we're getting into uh, designer. Now, designer is used to be called substance designer. And this is, I'm kind of, again, treating a couple things together. There's substance designer and substance painter. Uh, they're absolutely amazing applications. They were only somewhat recently bought by Adobe, and I think that kind of shows. Uh, but for, unfortunately, they're kind of again, gone to that pure subscription model. So if you're looking for an alternative to these two, and basically designer is about creating 3D materials, whereas um, Substance Painter is all about, you know, drawing or texturing 3D models. So there's a couple of programs that compete here. Uh, we've got Adobe, sorry, Quixel Mixer. Uh, this was bought by Epic Games and made completely free. Uh, it is a tool for doing uh, really neat procedural texturing work. Uh, the thing is, it's not a direct comparison, not one-to-one -one by any means, uh, but it also hooks into the Megaskins library. So this is the closest competitor that you're going to find. And the cool thing here is it is absolutely free. Uh, and then if you want to hook into the Quixel Megascans libraries and the smart materials and so on, uh, if you're using it with an Unreal Engine project, those are all uh, completely free to use as well. And that's a massive library of textures. But on top of Quixel, another one I like, and this is a more of a competitor to uh, this, the material side of things, material creation, is Material Maker. Now, this is a node-based texturing tool. I've covered it a number of times on this channel in the past, and I am absolutely in love with Material Maker. Now, it's no competitor, like direct one-to-one, -one, but you probably don't need all of the power of material and you'd be shocked at exactly what you can do with material maker it's one of those things i highly recommend you check out you can make some very cool materials with this and again it's using a, a node-based hierarchy to create those tools or those textures procedurally material maker completely free and open source definitely one worth checking out and then we've got armor paint uh, now armor paint is free if you build it yourself otherwise it's quite cheap i think it's like 20 bucks it's kind of a lightweight uh painter alternative now another one i didn't cover here that could have been mentioned was 3D Coat. I did do a video on it at some point in the past. It's about $400, I think, for 3D Coat uh, to buy that one. And it does more. It also does sculpting and a couple of other things as well. Uh, and then we get into the final one, the daddy, the biggie, the one that probably most of you use and probably want to replace if there's one you're looking to replace. And that is Adobe Photoshop. Now, this is the pixel graphic art of toy of choice like if you're doing any photo editing uh that kind of work photoshop is sort of the standard language uh but we've got alternatives out there again the first one i start with is affinity photo now i said earlier on i absolutely love affinity designer and i prefer it over adobe illustrator i wouldn't say the same thing about affinity photo i quite like affinity photo uh but I don't think it directly competes with Photoshop. But then again, it's also a $50 buy once purchase as opposed to, you know, a monthly subscription of $40 a month for Photoshop. Uh, and in the Affinity Photo side of things, it does what I need well enough. Uh, and it's available on Windows, Mac, and iPad, uh, which is pretty cool. And this is actually what I use for 99% of my work, but I don't get into that much photo work. Um, and then there's other tools out there like Lightroom for doing touch-ups and so on. In that case, I use something called Luminar Neo, but a different subject. So uh, again, from the commercial side of things, uh, it doesn't as full functioning as Adobe Photoshop, but you'll find that if you're only doing a little bit of stuff, Affinity Photo might be a great pickup for you. And on the free side of things, I'm doing this in two categories. One here, this is a painting application. It could also kind of compete with the animation side of things. And that is the excellent Krita. Krita is an open source program that has just improved staggeringly. And I would actually argue that Krita is more of a competitor to something like uh, Corel Painter. Uh, but if you're doing um, natural media painting in Photoshop, definitely check out Krita. It could probably replace it straight out. Another option, obviously, is good old fashioned GIMP, the GNU image manipulation program. Uh, it's starting to get some love on the user interface side, thank goodness. Um, and it is quite obviously, it's for photo manipulation. Uh, it it's, tries to be pretty much a one to one competitor to Photoshop. And obviously, this one is free and open source. And the other option you've got is Photopea. Now, Photopea is basically a Photoshop clone. You can see the, the different file formats you can actually work with down here that runs entirely in your browser, which is uh, pretty impressive. It actually does a very good job of it. If you've ever used Photoshop before, you'll find Photopea looks a heck of a lot like it. Now, it's ad-supported unless you pay for it, uh, but it's 
again, a browser-based clone of Photoshop. And some people absolutely swear by it. I personally, again, use Affinity Photo for most of my work. I've covered Photopea in the past, but it's definitely one of those ones you want to be aware of. And now I kind of hinted at this at the very beginning. Uh, Kenny and L just did an update of this. Uh, originally, it was collected by another fellow, but it wasn't fully up to date on uh, the things. And he's basically breaking it down by all of the different suites that are out there. Photoshop, Illustrator, Anime, InDesign, Substance, Lightroom, XD, Premiere, Acrobat, Bridge, Dream, Weaver edition and After Effects, and it's giving a number of different options available. I'd love to see Kenny update this to show um, the, so there is the price details here. It would be nice to see it a little bit broken down for um, open source as another category as well, but a great resource here. You can learn about a number of different options that are out there. Again, you're going to get some overlap between different categories. When I said in Animate, there are a number of different competitors. There definitely are. So the ones I'd mentioned on were Moho, um, and open tunes and blender. I've also done a video on the past on both Wick and Synfig. Uh, and I think Toon Boom. Toon Boom might actually be the biggest commercial one. I should have maybe picked Toon Boom over Moho. But as you can see, in the world of animate, there are a ton of options out there. So if you're doing uh, 2D animation work, you, you definitely do not need to use Adobe products. Uh, Substance breaks down a little bit further. There's a lot less alternatives when it comes to Substance. I did mention briefly about Lightroom. This is for doing, um, you know, photo changes, relighting and that kind of stuff. Uh, in this case, I actually use this guy right here, Luminar Neo. I pretty much use it on a daily basis and highly recommend it as well. Uh, but as you see here, he's broken down a number of different options well beyond what we were going here. But what I've shown you uh, in this particular video is basically my suggestion, both commercial and free. And I'll end it with the one I started with. I would highly suggest if you're looking for an alternative to like their main suite as Photoshop and Illustrator, I highly recommend checking out the Affinity Suite from Serif. Great programs. But as you can see here, there are a number of options and alternatives out there. You do not have to stick with Photoshop unless you are working in an environment that uses those products, in which case hey, they do have a, like an entrenched uh, hold over the industry for a reason. And they're good products. Like, you know, there's nothing wrong there. Uh, the company may be a little lazy with their updates as of late, and the, um, the subscription models definitely suck. But there's a lot to like about their products as well. But if you are looking for a free alternative, you have a ton of options out there. So let me know what you think. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.